Hey, Year Thirteen. Okay, I'm doing a night. I'm doing a quick webinar. Uh, Robin Goo has sent me a couple of questions uh, from an A2 paper that he's been working on. And hey, Thirteen. Ooh, ooh, okay, I'm oh, doing a night. I'm no, doing. No, no, stop that one. So I'm quickly going to be going through the questions, and obviously the great thing is you guys will be able to watch this back later. I understand if you can't show up now because I'm doing it live just uh, when I have the free time. So okay, it's going to be a nice and qu nice quick one. I'm not going to waste your time. Drop straight into sharing my screen, and we're going to have a look at the three questions that Robin has asked me. Now, the one thing I am lacking today is I'm lacking a really good calculator, um, but I will do the best at using my phone calculator. I asked, can I just say I really do hate uh, using using calculators that aren't the ones that you would use in the exam, but we will do our best today. Okay, so first question that Robin asked me was part of a redox titration. So it says, and an experiment is carried out to check the oxidation number of chromium in chromium 2 ethane dioate, and it's given a horrible complex. Quite nice to draw that one out. I'll have a quick look at that uh, momentarily. Oh, hang on one second. I'm just going to grab my other laptop so I can see any questions that come in. Give me 10 seconds, folks. Just going to set this laptop up next door. Okay, so quite nice, really, just to... Uh, now, I need to kind of tackle the question, first of all, before I go off-piste. So the question started off with saying that they had one gram. So you notice I'm dropping into a highlighter. It's always, I always say that it's worthwhile trying to extract data from questions. One grams, and then it's given us a really nice bit of information, which is the moles of chromium 2 ethane diorate. What that means is we don't need to work out the MR of the complex. That makes things a whole lot easier. And they added this one gram, and it's given us the moles, in 25 centimeters cubed of one molar sulfuric acid. Now, everyone knows that the sulfuric acid that's there is, in, is there to enable us to be able to do uh, a change in oxidation state. Now, we're starting off with chromium-2. So chromium-2 is what we've got at the beginning, and I'm just going to quickly make a note of that. I've got chromium-2+. plus. They then take that 25, and they're diluting it to 250. Now, of course, that means there's going to be a times 10 somewhere. So I am very aware that because we've done a 25-centimeter solution at the beginning, and then we take it up to 250, it means that when we do the titration of probably a 25 centimeter portion, which appears in the next section, it means that we're going to have to do a times 10 to get back to the original. So quite nice to do that. Okay, 25 centimeter portion of the dilute solution was titrated with. Okay, so we've been given a concentration, there's our moles per dm cubed, of our potassium permanganate. It's nice to change that, of course, into a formula. KMNO4. What that means is it's really nice to do the reminders of the redox titrations that the color change is going to be from colorless to pink, not, not sorry, uh, yeah, colorless to pale purple to purple uh, or pink, doesn't matter which one you say. And the reason being is the potassium permanganate is going to go into excess. And it then says calculate the volume of potassium permanganate needed to oxidize the chromium 2 ions in the 25 centimeters cubed all the way up to chromium six. Right, and then it also confirms that the manganese is going to get down to oxidation state plus two. So the first thing we need to do is to create two equations for this. So we've got chromium two plus being oxidized up to chromium six plus. Let's balance that with electrons. What that means is it's going to lose four electrons on this side because we've got a plus two on the left, plus six on the right, bring everybody down. So that's going to lose four electrons. Let's now, of course, do our permanganate redox titration uh, equation. So we start off with MnO4 minus, notice that the potassium vanishes, and that's going to be converted into Mn2 plus. So we know that the, the permanganate ion is dark purple and the Mn2 plus is colorless. So first thing we need to do is we need to moway or moa our our equation metal now the manganese is already you know it's already got one and one uh oh i've already had a question appear and i forgot to set up uh, isn't that funny my phone has just told me i'm just going to quickly log on to youtube by the way it's great to see you david really good to see you dude thanks for coming along and he's just already asked me a question which is really lovely let's see if i can track down my video for this 
I'm just, David, I'm just quickly um, dropping onto my other laptop on my YouTube channel in order to find out, to be able to see my, the, the, the streaming I'm doing. Sorry, it's taking me a little bit of time. I, I want to pause there because if David's asked me a question, so if I go live streaming, then it should drop me into events and I can now go click on that event and it should show me, there we go. So I can now click on that. Thanks. Oh, there we go. I'm going to pause that one. Cool. So my channel is now up on my other laptop. Let's see the question come through. Okay, so I'm just going to drop back into balancing the half equation. I haven't had any chats yet. Uh, I've got three people watching. That's great. All right, really quickly. I've just had David ask a question, and I can't see it. Let's see if I can, if I chat on this. Hey, David. Let's see what that does. Oh, nice one. Try that again. Right, uh, oh, he's put it into the comments, I think. Has he put it into the comments? No, he hasn't. Let's see if he can chat on that window. I've just had it pop up, David, and it's vanished. I apologize about that. I don't know whether or not you need to ask it again on the chat. Um, see if he can, I, I can't, I, I've managed to lose your question, David, I think. Uh, it may have come through to my emails. Oh, what is the short? <laughs> what is this short notice, sir? <laughs> yeah, sorry, David. Uh, David, the reason for the short notice is because um, Robin asked me to do these questions, and I thought it'd be better to do them as a webinar because I get to talk you through it rather than just an email. And it's a case of when I can fit it in. Okay, so let's go back to balancing my half equation. So metal is done. Water is next. I need waters for my oxygens. So I'm going to need four waters to give me the four oxygens. Then I need to balance with H pluses. So I've got eight H pluses, and then I need to balance for charge. Now, you get used to this equation. It's plus seven. Over this side, it's plus seven. And over this side, of course, it's plus two. The plus seven comes from the plus eight and the minus one. So I need to balance that with five electrons on that side. So the first thing I now, now, now what I need to do is the third thing is I need to actually put these two equations together. So this is going to be a times by five, and this is going to be a times by four. Okay, so at this point, I'm just going to multiply everything up. I'm going to change my color for this, even though I wouldn't be able to in the exam. Five, five, and that my four now drops to 20, or raises to 20. So I've got 20 electrons over here. This side is times by four, so I've got 20. Oh, uh, there, that's just why the dilute sulfuric acid is needed. So we need to times that by four, eight, six, 32. So I've got 32 H pluses, four, four, uh, for eight, 16 waters. Okay, so that now balances. Now, what that means is my electrons will now disappear, and I can now see, and the important bit is you don't actually need to write down the final equation, even though it's nice to, but it's the ratio between those two that matters. 32 H pluses, that's a lot of dilute sulfuric is going to be needed in terms of it being acidified, um, plus 4 MnO4 minus. By the way, I'm going really... I've just realized that the question is a big question. It's not a six, it's a five. It's a big question, which means I think it's worthwhile giving them the full equation anyway, plus 16 waters. Okay, now the whole point of that is to see the ratio between these two. So I now need to have, I'm going to need five chromiums to every four potassium permanganates. So... NO4 minus. Okay, so now that we've got our ratio, who do we now have the complete set of data for? So I have got in the presence, calculate the volume. Let's highlight the question. Calculate the volume of potassium permanganate. Right, let's transfer that down here. So I now need to know the volume of potassium permanganate. Vol is the question. I already have its concentration. Notice that it's, this is all about extracting the data. Okay, next. Uh, the concentration was 0. 0 0.0075 molar. You can't use molar, moles per dm cube for your side. Okay, the next thing is, so what's my potassium permanganate? Sorry, what's my chromium? So I've got a 25 centimeter portion, and that's what I put into it. So the first thing is, I've only got 10% of those moles. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide that by 10. So I have got 2 point, this is where having a piece of paper makes me, 2.66 times 10 to the minus 3. 2.66 times 10 to the minus 3 in the full 25 of the original, full 25 centimeters cubed of the original, and I now diluted it to 250, and then I took 25 of it. 
So I've taken 10%. So I'm now going to end up with 2.66 times 10 to the minus 4. Don't need a calculator for that one. So there's my moles in my 25. Well, if I know the moles of, of this guy, I now know the moles of potassium permanganate because then I'll just need to use my ratio. So I'm going to go 2.66 exponential minus 4. 2.66, this is where my calculator fails me. Exponential minus, oh, exponential minus 4. Ah, there we go, exponential minus 4. Now I need to use the ratio to get to them. So I'm going to divide this number by 5. Divide by 5 gets it to 1. And then I'm going to times it by 4 to get it to the point. So divide by 5, which is the ratio I got. And then I'm going to times it by 4. So I now end up with 0.0002128 moles of potassium permanganate needed to oxidize that up to chromium 6. Now, if I know that that now, of course, is going to be the moles, and I already have the concentration, I can now, of course, use my, my equation of number of moles equals C times V over 1,000 to calculate volume. Reorganize. N times by a thousand divided by a volume, uh, sorry, divided by the concentration of 0 0.0075. So I have that number already on my calculator. I'm going to times that number by a thousand, which drops me into, so once that's times by a thousand, it's 0 0.2128. Divide that by 0 0.0075. And that gives me a volume. So my volume there is going to be 28.37 centimeters cubed. Okay, so that will allow, that's going to be my titration volume by doing the 25 centimeter sample of the 250 dilution. It then said, calculate, the, but the thing is, I haven't finished, have I? Because it says, calculate the volume of the potassium permanganate needed to oxidate in the 25, uh, in each 25 centimeter portion. Of the um, to the plus six, the manganese is reduced. Comment on your answer and suggest how the experiment could be improved to give a more suitable titer. Now, what's interesting about that is that I would say that that's a very reasonable titer. To get twenty eight point three seven centimeters cubed right in the middle of a of a burette, it seems very reasonable. That now, what that suggests is that I've possibly made an error. So just to check through what I've done, this is where I'm worried that my calculator is going to have let me down. We don't have a normal calculator, do we? Oh, I really need we to buy one. We have somewhere. So the one gram moles into 25 centimeters of sulfuric acid. It is diluted with distilled water until the volume is 250. A 25 centimeter portion is titrated with 0.0075. From two to six, the equations are all good. The, the ratios are all correct. So the original was 10 to the minus 3. My diluted. My diluted gives me that. I took a 25, which is 10% of it. Seems all reasonable. Okay, so that's very interesting. Uh, I will then say comment on your answer and suggest how uh, the experiment could be improved to give a more suitable titer. Calculate the volume of potassium permanganate needed to oxidize the chromium 2 present in each 25 centimeter portion. More suitable. I don't see why that's unsuitable. It suggests I've made an error. Have I forgotten a have I forgotten a time somewhere? Now the, the times 10, of course, doesn't apply. Divide by, divide by 5 times by 4 gives me my moles. Concentration. I'm just going to run that through my calculator again. 0 0.0000. The problem is my phone doesn't allow me to. Ah, 0.1232128. And that's the problem is it doesn't. 0. This is from my calculator. 1, 2, 3, 2. There we go. 1, 2, 8. Times by a thousand, it's going to give me the same number. Yeah, divided by ah, naught point naught naught seven five. 
No, it gives me the same answer. Okay, comment on the result. I think the tight is very reasonable. It's going to say that the, the tight is going to, it's meant to be too large. Experiment how it could be improved. They're going to want me to say to, to, um, to dilute it further to make the, in order to make it possible. What I'm worried about is that there's a second reaction going on. Five marks. That's awfully mean. Okay. There's a, there's a, there is a chance here. Okay. So it's nice to come, by the way, in an exam, of course, that would not go down well. Okay. I probably know what's going on. Most likely, it's the fact that my ethane dioate, which is... Ugh, my ethane dioate, which is C2H4 2 minus. H4? No, it's not. C2O4 2 minus. That is also being oxidized, and it's being oxidized up to carbon dioxide. If I balance that equation, it's going to spit out two electrons. I've got a second reaction going on here. And the nightmare is there's two in this, there's two in each one. No, there isn't. There's four in each one. Right. Okay. Okay, just to explain what I'm doing here, folks. There is a, I think, chances are there's going to be a second reaction going on. This all comes out of the fact that my titer seems awfully perfect. I don't like that. There's going to be a second reaction. Um, the potassium permanganate is going to be oxidizing the ethane dioate up to... Uh, into carbon dioxide. So, okay, if I run that equation, I have got, and I need to explain where the four is about to come from, which is a nightmare. So, I had four ethane dioates, so I've got a balance for it. Oh, per molecule in order to get, no, I can, I can do this independently, I can. Okay, so if I do that, two equations, right? Then I have MnO4 minus, going to form MN2 plus as well. I should have combined the two equations originally. That's what I should have done, rather than doing them separately. Ah, nightmare. I understand why you're struggling with this, Robin. So, okay, plus four H2Os. And the problem is trying to do this in exam settings. It would be absolute nightmare. And, and that's meant to be done in five minutes. So that's going to be, and my moles is going to need to be times up by four. Okay, so times that by five times that by two. I don't need to do the two equations separately, by the way. I can combine them. I can. That's a nightmare. Okay, just do it. Get on with it. Five, 10, 10. That gives me 10 at that point and they're gonna cancel. I just need my ratio, remember? And that's times by two. So the ratio between those two is five to two. Right, so where do my moles come from? My moles comes from the fact that I had 2.66 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of CR brackets C2O4 2 minus. Oh, hang on a minute. It wasn't dioate. It was a single oate, wasn't it? Ethane, ethanoate. Ah, oh, my ratio is off again. Oh. oh, in that case, I don't know whether or not that's going to be true. I think this is going too far, folks. I do think it would, though. Let's do it as a single. Okay, if I was in an exam, I would have stopped at that point and said, it's a, I would have said, Titus quite large to be doing, Titus, at that point I would have stopped, because that's going too far now. I'm going to run it again anyway. I'm going to look at the mark scheme as well. So I've, I'm, I'm going to have another go at this in a second. I would say that that Titus is quite large, if I, and the bigger you, but however, the bigger you can make it, the reducing error you're going to get. It was only one gram. So I would say, Titus small, comment on the Titus. Titus relatively, only, only half a burette. That's silly. Only half a burette. It's a perfect titer in my opinion, but I'll stick with it. It's partly because I've made an error. And then titer, only half a burette. Dilute further. And what would I dilute? I need to make it, I need to make the, uh, and I can't concentrate up. I can actually, you're allowed to say it in the exam, which frustrates me. But I, I would actually say, instead of diluting to 250 and taking a 25, I would dilute to 250 and I would only take... Uh, if I take I take a larger amount, take 30, you'll need a larger titer. Or dilute it. If you dilute it, 
if you double the dilution, if you dilute this to 500 and take 25 centimeter sample, the, the burette's then going to be too small to hold the volume. There's a second reaction. I know it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Hang on one sec. The Fe3 ethanoate is going to be oxidized to carbon dioxide. I've gone too far. I, ha I probably haven't. That's the nightmare. Balance it. Carbons are not good. Well, oxygens aren't good either. H2Os. About to find out, actually, in, in a second, whether or not this is going to work. Two of those. Lots of H's needed. Seven H's, so seven H pluses. Right, balance for charge. Two minus on that. No, one minus on that side. Total is one minus there, and it's going to be plus seven on that side. Bring that down. So that's going to be plus plus eight electrons. They're on the wrong side. Or are they? MnO4 minus going to Mn2 plus. Plus five electrons. No, it's not. It's correct. So, okay, times by mm, times by five, times by eight. This is a nightmare to get the electrons to be the same. Five is going to be 40. That goes to 40. That goes to 40. That goes to eight, and that goes to five. Ratio is a five to eight. The moles, trying to do that in our the allotted time would be absolutely crazy. I'm putting the two equations together. I'm trying to make this quicker, but the problem is in an exam I wouldn't be able to. I would have already lost my time by that point. Dilute further. Dilute to 350. Love to see the marks came. It's going to oxidize it. It doesn't make sense. My titer seems good. I'm wondering whether or not my calculator has an error. Let me check. Uh, I've done a bad job of that, folks. We have a quick look at Robin's questions. Robin gave me two questions. And they were here, I think. Yes, and there's the mark scheme. Right. 10 divided by 10 gives you 10 to minus 4. We got that. Second one, ratio is 4 to 5. Fine. So it gives me the, my, the third mark is the moles of potassium permanganate times by 4 divided by 5. Okay. Times 8. Ah. Right, there you go. Second equation. Ugh. I knew it would. Look, correct answer, no working. If you got my answer, I got three. The problem is, it's unsuitable. That I knew it was an error. And there's the second equation, which I've just done, eight to five. So that's an absolute nightmare, that. Right, Robin. I spotted it, and it came out in the wash when I got my title, which seemed correct. I would have got three in an exam. Interesting. Okay. What I'm going to do is... I'm going to have another go at that, folks, even though it takes me too long. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have another go, and because I, I want to show you what the correct answer was in a reasonable amount of allotted time. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to have another go at that, try and remember numbers as best I can. Right, so first thing is the chromium is going to go from chromium 2 to chromium 6 plus. Balance for charge, four electrons. Right, the second equation is I'm going to have the ethane, and Robin, I know that's really tough there. In order to be able to recognize that it's going to oxidize something else is really, really difficult. Really tough. So then I'm going to, this is where my, my laptop's being a pain, because I'm running out of space. I'm going to have to move stuff. It's, it's squashing me to the edge, and I don't like it. Let's move it over. Okay. So at this point, I've got four oxygens on that side, but only two. I need two H2Os on that side. Now I've got seven hydrogens on this side. I need seven hydrogens on that side to give me H pluses. Charge, bring seven plus down to one minus eight electrons. Right. Now what I can do is, because those two equations are both, because those two equations are both the same in terms of electrons being sat, spat out, I should be able to combine them. I should be able to. It's going to be interesting to see if this gives me the right answer. It should. Let's give it a try. Let's put those two equations together which means my electrons are going to, I'm going to have Cr2+, plus, 2H2Os, plus ethanoate ion, goes to 2CO2s, plus a Cr6+, plus, plus 7H pluses, ah, ah, plus 7H pluses, plus 12 electrons. Okay, now that I've got my complete equation for oxidation, now I can do the permanganate one. 
So MnO4 minus going to Mn2 plus. I'm really interested to see if this is going to give me the right answer of the 58. Right, I'm going to add waters to this side. Four H2Os plus eight H pluses plus five electrons. I'm, I'm good at that equation now. Right, now I can put these equations together. So I need to get the 12, so times by 5 and times by 12. What a nightmare. Now, it doesn't matter about giving me the complete equation. I don't need to. Because what I need is the ratio between the one equation to the other in terms of electrons. So I'm going to have, it is going to be a 12, 12 to 5 ratio in the equation. It's going to be a 12 to 5. So I've got 12 MnO4 minuses, and I've got that to five electrons on the other side, or just sorry, five on the other side. And that's going to be the mixture of Cr2 plus and ethanoate. So there's my ratio. Now I can pick up the moles. Now the moles, of course, it was looking for the volume of this guy, and the concentration was 0 0.0075. Was it three or two? Is where not having access to the question is a nightmare. It's only two, seven, five. See if it gives me the right answer. Seven, five. And this guy, we had the moles of. We were given that moles, which was 2.66 times 10 to the minus four, because I'd taken a 10% sample. And the volume, of course, of that was 25. I took 25 centimeters cubed of this. Not that it matters, I've got the moles. Right, so what they're after is, that's the concentration, remember? It looks like that's the moles concentration, whereas this is moles. Right, I can use my ratio. So divide by 5, divide by 5 times by 12. Right, let's try that again. 2.66 exponential minus 4. Ah, 2.66 exponential. I'm, I'm using a really, really, really tricky calculator here. There we go. And I'm going to divide that by 5 equals times by 12. Right. So that gives me 0 0.000684 moles of it. The concentration was 0 0.0075. So now I can work out the volume, times that by 1,000, and divide it by its concentration of 0 0.075. And am I going to get 50? Times by 1,000, divide that by 0.1275, and I get, and I get the wrong answer. Isn't that interesting? I've just got a volume of 85.12. What that means is I can't combine those equations. Isn't that fascinating? I can't do it, it won't let me. It won't allow me to do it, and I can show you why. It's a really fascinating question, and it requires practice and talking through. The reason why it requires a chat through is because I've got four of them in that complex, which makes it really even more troublesome. By the way, at that point, if I got that answer, I can still comment on it being too large and I'm going to dilute it and I'm going to, what would I do? Um, I need to dilute it further in order to use less permanganate. And that's probably in the mark scheme. So it gave me the moles, it wanted me to do the concentration of the two at seed times by four, the moles of it are there. What a nightmare. Times by eight. Oh, divide by five. Four point, I'm wondering if my calculator's giving me an error here. I hate doing this without a calculator. I apologize, Robin, for doing that. At that point, I think I'm going to give up on that question. I would have scored three. I'll, need, I'll go through that again. I don't want to waste more, more of my time doing the same question, especially since it's only meant to be five minutes. I'm going to move on to Robin's second question. Explain how the lattice energy values. I, I feel I feel guilty for not being able to solve that for you guys. Explain how the lattice energy values, together with other data, can be used to predict the solubility of an ionic compound. All right. So this is. If I go, let's go for an unknown salt. So if I have um, N, A, yeah, choose a random one, I. Let's predict its solubility. 
So if I have a solid, the solubility, the enthalpy of solution is here, delta H sol. And that says taking a, uh, an ionic solid and dissolving it into water to form its aqueous ions. Now, we need to find out whether or not that's possible. Now, they haven't mentioned temperature here at all, but what we can do, of course, is we, we can discuss temperature. Let's make an assumption. Let's make the assumption that this is meant to be at room temperature. Because whenever you get your lattice energies, these are all our standard, um, standard T and P, so standard temperature and pressure. So at that point, we need to look at the lattice dissociation energy because we need to consider how to get from this to this using other data. And we can do that using the lattice enthalpy. We can take an ionic solid and we can rip it apart into its gaseous ions. Now, notice, by the way, that I've actually done the arrow in the other direction. That's because most of the time you tend to get lattice energies rather than dissociations. And what you'd look up, you'd look up in your, in your data book, you would look up the lattice dissociation, uh, or in fact, the lattice energy for that one, which would give you something like from ions to solid, which is going to be forming bonds, it's exothermic, let's call that 800 kilojoules per mole, just for fun. This is really for explanation only. Right, now, in order for me to get in the other direction, I'm gonna, oh, now we can go for the hydration enthalpies. This is delta H, hydration. Now, these are always exothermic. So this is going to be minus, let's call that 300. And let's go for the hydration of iodide ions, which is, let's say, call that minus 400. Now, at this point, what I want to do is consider the process of going in that direction. Now, one of my arrows is going in the wrong way, which is this one. So what I need to do is I need to flip it over. So I'm going to flip it. Now, if I flip that arrow over, I need to flip the data. So I just flip its charge. Right. So in order to go from the ions to its, it's from, its, from its solid to its aqueous ions, we need to, first of all, smash the lattice. Now, that takes energy to do. It takes plus 800 energy. And how much energy am I going to be supplied? How much energy am I going to be supplied? I should, you know what? I should color code this properly. I always like color coding things properly. So we know that smashing a bond like that, smashing this one is endothermic. That cost me 800 kilojoules per mole just because I randomly chose it. And on this side, it gave out a total, and now I can total this side up, which is going to be minus 700. And at that point, we can make a realization that adding the ions to water is going to be insufficient to be able to break the lattice energy. At room temperature, it will not be soluble. So what we need to say is that for something to be soluble, by the way, that is all, folks, that is all explanation. That's it. I'm just explaining. This is not what I would write down in my exam. So we say, how can you predict the solubility of an ionic compound? You would say, bullet point number one, if, if the, the heat energy, I prefer using heat energy, it's actually, in my mind, it makes more sense. If the heat energy released, if the heat energy released from the hydration, from the hydration, of gaseous of gaseous ions is greater is greater than the second second bullet point is greater than the heat energy the heat energy required to break to break the ionic lattice, the ionic lattice, then the enthalpy, then the enthalpy of solution, enthalpy of sol will be exothermic. Spare energy, exothermic, therefore feasible. Nice to drop into feasibility there. So your three marks are going to be the comparative. You can do that in a simple way as well. Delta H 
uh, hydration, sum of delta H hydration is greater than the delta H lattice dissociation, lattice enthalpy, then it will be feasible. And it should be soluble. Done. So it's quite nice to see that one. That one's a lot simpler than the previous one. And that was there was a pure explanation diagram just to show you what I'm talking about in terms of data. But that's the words. I hope that makes a lot more sense for you now, David. Just let's, you know what? let's quickly go to the mark scheme. David's been super efficient and sent me these questions with the mark scheme. There we go. First mark, reference to the enthalpy of hydration. An equation, there we go. Enthalpy of solution equals lattice and minus lattice enthalpy plus the enthalpy of hydration. Second, the solubility depends on the relative size of the lattice energy and en the enthalpy of hydration. So third mark, solubility likely if enthalpy of solution is negative, if it's exothermic. So cool to see all those marks appearing. Okay, okay, so that gets us all three of those. Let's go, Fabale. It's nice for me to show you where those marks are coming from. So heat energy is released. Heat energy released from hydrations of gracious ions is greater than the heat energy required to break the ionic lattice, the lattice dissociation, and therefore it will be exothermic. So there's your three marks there. Okay, next one. The formula of a complex ion presence in the solution is found by adding aqueous silver nitrate to the solution. This only reacts with the free chloride ions to form a precipitate of silver chloride. The precipitate is then right. So hang on a minute. We have Ag. Now this is where I'm going to do a nice reminder of you guys. We have an Ag complex. Now, the Ag complex is nice to talk about. It doesn't have to be charged, actually. It could be neutral, but if it was neutral, it would be already a precipitate, and it says a solution, so it's going to have a charge, and it will probably be 1 plus. Silver is always plus 1. And also, it's nice to also do the reminder that silver always forms di complexes. It's quite a nice thing to see that. Okay, so they've formed a precipitate of this guy, and they have filtered it off. So this whole complex is going to be in solution. They've added in silver nitrate. Uh, sorry, they've added in... Well, hang on. The form of the complex ion solution found by adding silver nitrate to the solution. The only reaction... Oh, right. So hang on a minute. I tell a lie. Interesting. Right, this is part three, Robin. <laughs> okay, so we have a complex ion. X brackets, and I'm going to assume it's going to be chloride ions present. <laughs> I don't know how many. Well, that's the question, isn't it? A complex ion it's gonna get, it hasn't given me a charge either. Um, present, okay, the precipitate formed is weighed in the experiment 0.012 moles of one of the forms of chromium 3 chloride was used and of silver chloride to the form. Okay, so it's chromium-3. Cool. So we're looking to find out chromium-3 complex. Was there anything else attached to it, Robin? I assume there was. There was, but we'll see. Deduce the formula of the complex and show you're working. Okay. So 3.44 grams of silver chloride, AgCl. Right. This is going to tell me the number of chloride ions, isn't it? So first thing is... Grams is no use to us. We need moles. So we need to do number of moles as grams over grams. 3.44 over the MR of silver chloride. Right, I've got to quickly find the MR of silver chloride. Well, I don't know what the MR of silver is off the top of my head. That's quite unusual, isn't it? I usually know my ARs, but silver's fairly unusual. 108. The problem is that's GCSE, not A level. Let's assume it's 108 point something. Let's just keep it as 108.0. So 108. Plus 30.5. 108. That's the AR of silver plus 35.5. Plus 35.5. My phone calculator is always 143. There is a mark, remember, for that number, not for the calculation. Right, so 3.44 divided by 143.5 equals. Right, that gives me the moles of silver chloride is 0.02397. Right, if I was going to round that to three sig figure, it'd be four zero. I'm going to do that, four zero, but I'm going to keep that number on my calculator. No, the problem is my calculator is rubbish. So I'm going to write down the full thing. 
two, three, nine, seven. I'll do two. That's plenty. Okay. Right. That tells me the moles of silver chloride, but also that is also the moles of chloride ions. So what that now means is I've now got the moles of chloride ions and I have the moles of chromium. Well, if you notice the number, the moles of the experiment of one chromium three chloride. So if you notice, the number is exactly double. So what that means is, deduce the formula of the complex. So I've got chromium. I'm going to make a big assumption here, folks, that because I have double the number, that is 0 0.012, that's of chloride ions, and that's of chromium 2 plus. It is exactly twice it. So I'm going to have probably four waters still attached and two chloride ions. I'm going to make that as a big assumption because he hasn't told me the rest of the question. Now, because it said chromium 3, what that means is they're electrically neutral. That's 2 minus. This is going to be plus 1. So I assume that's the product. Uh, he hasn't given me the rest of the question, but that's the assumption I make. Whatever else isn't there, whatever because the, the chloride must be two of them. We know that chromium forms a hexa, uh, a hexa complex, an octahedral complex. So the rest of them is probably going to be water. I hope that was helpful. Cool. I really want to have a go, another go at that first question, but at that point, I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it there for today. He's given me three questions, and I will leave it there. Sorry for the mess, folks. Uh, let's do stop share screen. There we go. All right, folks. Um, sorry about the first question. I'm going to leave it there today. I might have, uh, I'll do another go at that, at that when I get back uh, into school. Um, but I will leave you be. Have a nice rest of your day. Can you please, please send me more questions to do and I'll do another short webinar again just to run through them. Hope it was useful. See you later, guys. Hope you're having a nice holiday.